I had a comment a while ago. Someone asked me if I sharpen my own uh, router bits, and I have in the past, but I didn't have anything uh, like a jig or, or a fixture or something to use for it. So I gave it a little bit of thought, and I came up with a very simple uh, thing that will make a difference when I want to sharpen a bit from now on. Uh, the biggest difference, of course, is that, uh, well, not of course, because you don't know about it yet, is that it will hold water that will lubricate the cutting action. And it's basically just this wooden box here that's open on the top, and it has a sharpening stick on the inside uh, that's fastened to a rail in the middle. And I'll be able to take the uh, jig, I guess you could call it, and set it down on the table, put some water in it, grab my bit and reach in and rub it up and down the stone and that'll make it sharp again. Of course, the first step before sharpening is to clean the bit. I have one here that I just finished cleaning actually and it's one I used to try to route the groove in my router tabletop and it started to smoke heavily because it's very dull. So I'm gonna see if I can improve on that here. So to build the jig, the first thing I had to do was actually come up with the idea for it, which is very basic. I didn't want to have any moving parts or anything like that. I just want to have this up in the cupboard so that I can take it down and use it when I need it. Now there's not a whole lot to this and I'm just making it from scrap plywood. To glue this together, I'm going to be using silicone, and this tube is actually around about 16 years old, I think. It's at least that old, anyway. I had it for some reason and then didn't use it, and then it wound up in the bottom of a drawer somewhere. And it'll be interesting to see if it still works after all that time. It is good quality caulking, though. And the reason why I'm using silicone is because, believe it or not, for the first time in shop history, I've run out of polyurethane construction adhesive. But in the meantime, this silicone will work for this. This is just a tank, basically, that's made out of wood. And I'm gonna pour water in there, and it has to hold the water. But it doesn't have to hold it for very long. You're not standing there sharpening a bit for hours on end. So you'll be dumping the water out after you're done, and then you set it aside to dry. After I finished nailing the box together, I let the silicone dry for a few hours. And next I want to put in the sharpening stick. And the idea is to fasten it to that strip of plywood that I have in the middle that elevates it. But I think the plywood may be a little bit too wide where the abrasive is. So I'm just going to take a chisel and whittle some of that away. And then I can fasten the stick with a couple of screws. I think this is deeper than it actually needs to be. So I'm just going to trim some off the sides and hopefully I don't hit any of the brads that I drove in to hold this together. And now another thing that I need to do is to slightly round over the edge of the sides like this so that they won't be rubbing uncomfortably against my knuckles while I'm sharpening a bit. One thing I want to change before I use this is to shorten that center rib that supports the sharpening stick since it really doesn't need to go the full length of the tank. I'm just leaving enough to fully support the stick. To pour the water out after I'm finished, I'm just going to shape a bit of a spout in one corner with a round file. Now that that's all done, the fun can begin. I have here a bottle of water that I've added a little bit of dishwashing liquid to to act as a lubricant and just going to dump that in. Ideally, I'd want this to come up over the sharpening stick. But if it's not quite there, that's okay too. And now I can start sharpening a bit. The idea is to just sharpen the face of the bit by holding it down flat against the sharpening stick and rubbing it back and forth. Now, obviously this jig as it is has some limits. You really won't be able to sharpen larger diameter bits with it without making the thing physically bigger. I can tell you one thing it would help if the water that you're using is warm. This water has been out in my shop in the cold and is not very comfortable to use. Well, aside from the cold water, uh, I've got another problem here. These cheaper bits are not quite flat on the face. So what I'm doing is I'm grinding more in the middle to try to flatten it so that I can get out to the very tip where it's actually the most dull. So 
I guess you could say it's an initial investment in time to get these straightened out to begin with, and then it'll be easy to sharpen from there on. And this is a fine stick that I'm using here, so it would make sense to have a coarser one to start with to actually get the thing flat and then switch to the fine one and do the uh, final sharpening. Let's see if I can actually dump this out into the bottle again. <laughs> It's looking kind of iffy. Maybe I shouldn't be doing this on top of my table saw. Ah, where's your balls, John? Just do it. Well, I'm not going to lie to you. It took a long time to get the bit sharpened, or at least I think it's sharpened. I actually had to resort to putting my diamond wheel on the table saw here to grind down the tip of the bit just to get rid of that last little bit that wasn't flat. Now that I think of it, this bit was never particularly sharp to begin with, and maybe that's what it was. The tip was curved back like that, making, I guess, a negative uh, cutting angle, which is never the sharpest. So next step is to put it in the router and actually try it out and see how it cuts. I've got a piece of maple here to test out the bit. I put it in my router cable have it sticking up about a quarter inch and it's a half inch bit so it'll be cutting a groove that size and I'm using maple because as you can see here it burns fairly easily so it'll be easy to see if there's much of an improvement in the bit at all. Okay you know what? That's actually not too bad. It didn't burn at all. I'm looking at the shavings that came out the end here and they're not burned either. <laughs> so I would say that's quite a big improvement over what it was before where it couldn't even make a cut in without creating a big cloud of smoke. Um, is it worth it? I would have to say for a bit that was in this bad shape, it's not worth it. If you're dealing with a bit that's just starting to burn, I would say, you know, use something like this and you can whip it back into reasonable shape. As for uh, the number of sharpenings you're gonna get out of it, I think that if you spend five minutes sharpening a bit and you get one more sharpening out of that bit, then it's well worth it because each of these things on their own, usually for the better ones anyway, usually costs from $10 up to, you know, for the smaller ones up to 30 or $40. So you can do the math on that one. 